Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage. And this is an HEI ignition module where it doesn't belong. It has been a long few days for various reasons. Do you guys know my back hurts? Well, it does. Okay. That's a little too close for comfort. Right. That ain't good. Mostly all bad. And personally, I feel like complete garbage. I have a horrible splitting headache. I'm not even wearing pants. I've been putting in some serious hours lately on getting some cars to leave and even more recently, organizing the shop. So for that reason, I don't have any updates this week on projects like this one. I've got a couple engines I'd like to be working on building too, but unfortunately today my back says, mm mm. So let's do something light duty and talk about HEI ignition. You might recognize this graphic from my classic Mopar ignition systems video. Even beyond that, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of it. Hastily okay, so scribbled at the bottom of that sheet, an HEI conversion wiring diagram. Something that I've been asked about many times ever since releasing that video. Could I please show more detail and explain this? Yeah, okay. This is your standard cruising model, four pin HEI ignition control module. And it, is my friend. Unfortunately, it was designed and engineered by General Motors. In spite of this, it's quite good. In its original incarnation, that HEI module lives here, underneath the cap on one of these big all-in-one General Motors HEI distributors. The module is triggered by a pickup inside this distributor, and it fires this coil built into the top of the cap. This entire thing is powered by one wire, which is kind of awesome. If you know classic Chrysler products, and you know the Chrysler electronic ignition module. It was standard equipment in 73 and newer Chrysler vehicles, but it's also found out of the hood of many earlier vehicles as they were often retrofitted to eliminate the points. These ignition modules in four or five pin configuration have helped Chrysler products like this motor on down the road for gazillions of miles over the last five decades. And they do this hmm, reliably enough, I guess, to a point. One drawback of the Mopar electronic ignition module doesn't really like high RPMs. Although supposedly some of them are better for this, like the orange box or the chrome box. The black box definitely isn't, unless it is. I don't know. I've read so much crap about these over the years and I don't know what color means what. And frankly, I don't care. Last week I did a video about ballast resistors. And in that video, I sort of refuted the common claim that ballast resistors fail all the time. In the video, I said I've had a whole lot more problems with the Chrysler electronic ignition modules than the ballast resistors. And boy, do the commenters agree with me. A whole bunch of commenters said they'd experienced the exact same thing. These modules just suck and they die. They do that for fun. So imagine my surprise and delight when I learned about these things like 12 years ago. At that point, I had already killed a whole bunch of the Chrysler modules including one in the McDonald's drive-thru in my 74 Dart sedan. I'd be happy to never put another one on a car, so this seemed like a great option. Now the HEI module is kind of amazing. For one thing, it's incredibly versatile. You can trigger this thing with almost any distributor. That includes points. Obviously this is a Mopar-centric channel and that's what I'm talking about for the most part, but if you're having ignition problems on like anything, you can retrofit this module in there to solve them. It can be triggered with a Ford distributor, at least from the 70s, not this crazy 90s concoction, and a set of points, like what would have been found factory in this 61 Studebaker. You can trigger it with a standard MSD or Excel performance distributor. You know, the ones that are all based on GM stuff anyway. And of course, you can trigger it with my personal favorite, the factory Mopar electronic distributor. Let's say you've got a pre-73 Chrysler product that you want to retrofit to electronic ignition. You can get a replacement distributor easily enough, but the wiring with these goofy proprietary connectors, not so easy. The AGI module, on the other hand, you can use standard female spade connectors. There is one smaller one there on the G terminal, and yeah, the standard one works fine. In its factory application, the HEI module is mounted to an aluminum distributor body. It uses this distributor body as a heat sink. In ideal conditions, when you move it out of that distributor, you want to find a chunk of aluminum to screw it to. You also want to apply magic heat conducting paste between the two. However, I have used many of these modules in much less than ideal conditions, like this, screwed to an inner fender, with success. 
Now the same incidentally cannot be said for this particular car. I think that's kind of down to my brother's excellent installation techniques. I'm sure the entire electrical system in this thing is just top notch. Suffice to say, if you can find a heat sink, great. If not, might it just deal with some paste. It'll probably be fine, but your mileage may vary on that one. Just like the factory Chrysler electronic ignition module, the HEI module is case grounded. This is accomplished through the mounting screws, so it's of utmost importance that they are fitted correctly and tight. No, I really just don't understand why these modules keep dying. It makes no sense. Those letters I keep saying, H-E-I, stand for high energy ignition. It's called this for pretty obvious reasons. But what it means for our purposes is, this module will happily live firing a low resistance, high output coil like this fancy flamethrower. Now you can use it to fire a factory type coil like this and use the ballast resistor to keep that coil happy. However, you probably don't want to do this and I'll tell you why. In my various videos about Chrysler Ignition, I've talked at length about the Ignition 1 and Ignition 2 circuits. In a points vehicle, which is probably what you're retrofitting with this HEI setup, Ignition 1 loses power when cranking and there is only power on Ignition 2. Ignition 2 is used to power the coil directly during cranking. But what it can't do is backfeed back through the resistor to feed the HEI module enough voltage to actually let the engine start. Just like the Chrysler electronic conversion I discussed in that video, this leads to a car that will not start when the starter is cranking, but as soon as the key is released, sometimes it'll burble to life. This is exactly what was initially happening on my brown 67 Barracuda when I installed the HEI with the factory coil. For simplicity's sake, to take advantage of the HEI and get a hotter spark, and for just about every reason imaginable, you really want to eliminate the ballast resistor and go to a high output coil, just like this one. Once again, as discussed in the ballast resistor video, this is easy. You just put a jumper wire in to the two sides of the harness that plugged into the resistor. And this is a very common modification. The same exact thing was done here on my Demon to power this MSD box. With that done, you now have an original coil positive feed wire that has both of the feeds you need. And wiring the module from there is very simple. You're going to take ignition power off of the coil positive over here to the B terminal on the HEI module. The C terminal right next to it is going to come back to the coil and connect the coil negative. That'll be the wire that triggers it. The other two wires on the module, labeled W and G, are simple. It's the two wires from your distributor that are going to trigger that module. It's actually not quite that simple though. You see, you're going to have two wires coming out of your electronic distributor. And oddly on this one, one of them is white. Usually they're orange and black, but those colors are not going to match the module here. Wired in one direction, this pickup will work perfectly. Wired in the incorrect direction, this pickup either won't work at all or will produce very strange results. The pickup being out of phase in this way is not good. You're gonna know right away when you try to start the car if it's wired right or not right. It may idle, it may not run at all, it may backfire horribly, it may run kind of okay, but not really rev up. It depends. I've had every one of those symptoms out of different conversions. So for this reason, I use care when I'm wiring the distributor side. I do like to use a smaller spade here so it can't be reversed later. But before I finalize them, I set the wires in here, you know, kind of pull them tight and test fire the vehicle to make sure it's good. This diagram is a rough copy of one I've referred to on the internet dozens and dozens of times. And I could swear on that diagram it is drawn backwards because I've tried to match it time and time again, and it's always wrong. I've also tried to reverse it, and it's still always wrong. I think orange goes to white and black goes to green. So that's probably backwards. And it may even be different based on the rotation direction of the distributor. I am just not sure. Just assume you're gonna get this wrong on your first try and you'll be good to go. Now you can just clip the wires going into the distributor and hardwire them. That works fine, but you can also find this pigtail end at your local parts store to match the factory Chrysler distributor end. And that's nice in case you ever experience a distributor failure. It makes changing it out much easier. And because that's not entirely uncommon, I always do this. To trigger the HEI module with the set of points, as I was discussing earlier, you ground out the W terminal here, and the points connect to the G terminal. However, 
You also need a pull-up resistor wired between there and battery positive. Go ahead and seek out diagrams and information from smarter individuals than me on that one if you're really curious. It's actually possible to trigger the Chrysler module with points too. That's pretty neat, but it's a different story entirely. I've been using the HEI conversion setup on the Llama Barn Valiant here as an example. As you can see, my brother did a really, really super great job on that install. This damn thing actually died rolling into the shop here, which is inconvenient. Every damn time. I really don't feel like pushing it right at the moment. So I wonder if tightening that screw fixed it. <sighs> no. Yeah, it's done. It lost spark. That's fine. We'll just install its fourth new module in a month. Oh, I forgot a very important detail. If you're mining this straight to sheet metal or a little cooler you made or whatever, you gotta clip off those little tits. Otherwise it won't sit down flush. Nice. Oh yeah. Now, if you're looking at this thinking, gee, Jamie, I don't think I wanna replace four modules every month. Just know that it's not an HEI problem. It's a Colin problem. <laughs> Yay. Like it never happened. Of course, now I lost my prop. You'll notice I just performed way too professional a replacement job. It's even held in with both screws and it's got heat paste and everything. That's actually because, <clears throat> I guess I'm about to own this piece of crap. I don't get to keep the Magnum headed roller 360, but that's okay. Cause the other day I ruined my back picking this up. That engine came with everything but a camshaft. So I went ahead and solved that problem too. Anyway, more on that later. For now, I'm just glad it runs again. There's one other cool advantage to the HEI system. You can open the gap on your spark plug slightly to something like 45 or 50 thousandths with no problem. And that's been proven on a dyno to make like three horsepower, so hey, go for it. The performance of the HEI is pretty similar to your MSD type system, although it doesn't have the multiple sparks. I'm gonna leave this diagram up for just a few seconds. Hopefully that's enough. The HEI conversion is great. It uses readily available components, a module you can buy in any parts store anywhere, a cheap electronic distributor, and a little length of wire. Ah, don't forget the high performance coil. It's easy enough for a fuzzy headed doofus to make it work usually, so I'm sure you can do it too. Anyway, I think I've had enough fun for one day. It's time to sit down again. Maybe jump in the pool with a frosty cool adult beverage. In any case, thanks for watching, and look forward to more Llama Barn stuff coming soon.